Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns that are in their upcoming September of 2016 premiere auction. And what I have today are a pair of Mauser revolvers. Now, these, in fact, represent the only real revolver design by Paul Mauser. We know the Mauser Company and the Mauser Brothers primarily for their rifles and their semi-auto pistols, but really not for their revolvers. Well, there's good reason, they only did one. So Mauser got into the revolver market because they wanted to have something competing for the German army or the German military handgun trials in 1879. Uh, there were a bunch of guns being considered there. They, the Mauser 1871 rifle had been adopted by the German military and it would be quite the coup to have a revolver or a Mauser revolver also adopted by the military. Uh, unfortunately, what Paul Mauser came up with wasn't really quite good enough uh, to get the nod. So this is the model of 1878 Mauser revolver, which doesn't help you that much because it's also the only Mauser revolver, and there are a couple different versions of this, all of which were called the model 1878. So the first version was actually a solid frame gun. It had a loading gate for loading and unloading. And then what we have here is the follow-up to that, which is actually a hinged frame revolver. So the whole thing breaks open. Now they followed this up with another hinged frame design that was a little better, a little less complicated. Uh, these went to German military testing, those 1879 trials, and they were rejected as being too complex, which makes a lot of sense, as you'll see in just a minute. Uh, as a result, the, the uh, Reichsrevolver model of 1879 was adopted instead, which is arguably not a better gun, really, but it is a less complicated gun. So in the wake of this rejection, Mauser went ahead and did try and sell these guns commercially, they sold some, it was never a particularly successful gun, probably because of its complexity. So there were three calibers offered. They made them in a 7.6 millimeter cartridge, a 9 millimeter cartridge, and a 10.6 millimeter. The 10.6, or actually 10.55, uh, was that uh, formal German military cartridge, which the Reichsrevolver used as well. So what I have here are a 10.6 millimeter, the, the big frame version, and I have a 9mm version, and the 9 is the most common uh, to be found. They share all the same mechanical uh, features, mechanical design, so we will go ahead and take a look at the two of them and see uh, how these are kind of different, because they are very much different than what you're used to on a brake action revolver. These two don't look all that different, but I can tell you when you handle them, the large frame one definitely is the heftier gun. You can, you can really tell the difference picking them up couple things to touch on while we're looking at both. You'll notice they have these rather nice uh, ornate grips. They pretty much all did. The, these were molded that way, so it's not like they were hand engraved, but you'll find that on all of them. They had lanyard rings because they were intended as a military style service pistol. And of course we've got these patterns on the cylinders, which are the reason why these revolvers are typically colloquially known as Mauser zigzag revolvers for just that reason. We'll see how that works. That is, of course, the mechanism to revolve the cylinder. We'll take a look at that when we pull the guns apart. Now, like I said, these are the brake action versions. So the hinge pin is up here, and there's a latch down here. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the 11 millimeter gun, and we'll see how this all works. All right, the first thing we need to take a look at is this lever. This is important to the function of the gun, and it has three positions. We've got the top position there, the middle position, and the bottom position. Now if we look closely, I'm going to put this in the middle, right there, you'll see, if you look closely, that there are little slots cut in the cylinder. There are six of those, one for each chamber. It is a six-shot revolver. And when we're in the middle position, this latch is in one of those slots, which means if I try to cock the, the revolver, I can't. The cylinder can't rotate because it's being held in place by this. This functions as a manual safety. Just like the, uh, the 1879 Reichs revolver had a manual safety, so did Mauser's 1878. However, I can also push that to its lowest position. You can see it's still locking the cylinder. Now, however, it has unlocked the action and I can break this revolver open. Now the brake action here is done with this lever, which is already coming open. This is nice and loose when this is in the disassembly position. What we're going to do is push this forward. You can hold on to this, pull it all the way up, and at the top of travel it's spring-loaded and it has a star ejector on it. So that 
is the fully open position for the Mauser zigzag. Goes from here, pull that, eject, dump your cartridges. The last bit of travel here is spring loaded. And that's how this thing opens. Once it's open, then you reload it, which is a little awkward. I guess you'd hold it like this, uh, manually insert six cartridges. And you'll notice, you, you may have noticed, that this is the cylinder is still locked in place. The reason is you cannot close this revolver if the cylinder is not in a proper in position with one of the chambers lined up with the barrel. On a typical, like a Schofield break open revolver, you can have that cylinder in any position you want when you close it, and it'll automatically line up to the next chamber when you cock and fire the gun. The Mauser doesn't work that way. And that's because instead of having a hand at the back to push, uh, like a hand in here, to push on the cylinder, there is none. This is just a flat breech face. Instead, we have this lug down here. So this lug goes back and forth. When I cock the hammer and release it, that lug moves. This is the mainspring right here in front of it, and you can see it's pushing this plunger out the front of the frame. This lug is riding in the tracks of the cylinder here. So what will happen is when you push it forward, it comes up, it catches here, and then it's going to run in this diagonal track, which forces the cylinder to revolve. It'll then go up into the top right there. And after you fire, when you release the trigger, that stud is going to come straight back here into the back corner. You may be wondering why does, what forces it to go into this diagonal. Well, it's actually a change in depth of that cut. If we look at this up close, you can see that when the stud gets to right here, it's going to drop lower, or actually since this is facing upward, it's going to pop up into this elevated, or this deeper section of the cutout. As a result of that, when it goes back forward, it'll hit that ledge and travel this direction. Now, you can see, if I were to try and close this with this, one of these grooves not lined up with that stud, I wouldn't be able to, because there's no place for that stud to go. That is why we have to have the cylinder locked right here in order to open the gun. Many decades after this gun came out, you would have some belt-fed machine guns with break-open top covers that had the same sort of arrangement and the same sort of problem, where you had to have the bolt in the proper position, either forward or back, in order to successfully close the top cover. So, now the gun is closed. Now we're going to take that, pull it all the way to its top position, and now we can chamber or cock and fire the gun. And we can see the cylinder moving, as well as this protruding out because of the mainspring. So typically in a, a revolver like this, you'd have a big spring back here in the grip. With the, with the 1878, we don't. Instead, there's a coil spring running right down here, which is what you could see when the gun was broken open. So here's the 9mm version. It is really cool. The, this has some remnants of the original Mauser finish, which was gorgeous when it was new. Uh, a little hard to get it clearly there with the glare, but they had this gorgeous deep blue on the receiver, as well as uh, small parts like the trigger. Got some really nice case hardening on the hammers. These were guns that had a, a high value put into their production. So the one set of markings you'll find on these are on the, the top of the barrel. And that is Gebruder Mauser & Company Oberndorf in Württemberg, uh, patent 1878. You'll find the same marking on all of them. They actually don't mention the caliber on the outside of the pistol, as far as I can see. So this lever is what controls our extractor. Uh, the spring on this one isn't working. But when we close it all the way, you can actually see a set of cog teeth right up here. So the, the lever has a set of cog teeth, and you'll find a matching set on um, the body of the extractor right there, which you can't see because it's inside the gun. But what this does is ensure that you have a nice, strong uh, leverage to actually extract cases, which these, these were a, uh, black powder revolvers, and you might have a bunch of fouling in the cylinder that would cause the cases to be sticky. So this lever, you want to make sure it doesn't slip, um, and you get as much leverage as you can when using it to extract, potentially, sticky cases. 
Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we don't normally get a chance to take a look at uh, Mauser zigzag revolvers because they are quite rare these days. So particularly cool to get to get to take a look at two of them and see the differences between the different frames. So if you'd like to add either one of these to your own collection, take a look at the description text below. You'll find there a link to Rock Island's catalog pages for both of these guns. You can take, out, take a look at their pictures, their description, place bids online, or come up to Rock Island in person for the auction. Thanks for watching.